Okay. Um, so uh, today, for today, we we're reading chapter uh, chapter. Uh, well, we were going to finish up chapter twenty, and we further read chapter twenty one um, on the categories of categories. Uh, I do have enough uh, material from uh, the chapter twenty the uh, functors chapter that I, I felt I need to finish a couple issues and uh, that's what we'll we'll do here. So I am going to share my screen and we'll switch over to some slides. Okay, um, here we go. Great. Uh, so there are two topics that were uh, notable within the context of chapter 20 uh, that I really wanted to emphasize. Um, and uh, they relate to uh, functors as pattern matching and as involved in in um, with diagrams. Um, and things like uh, projection and reflection. That's one topic. But I also wanted to talk about covariance. The first of these is ones I want to cover a bit earlier, partly because we've we've seen some of it in past weeks for sure. But I, I don't want it to go um, to left on without comments here. Um, so... Um, the last lecture, and, and then some lectures uh, much earlier, of course, we encountered functions, which are these structure-preserving mappings between categories, mapping objects to objects and morphisms to morphisms in a way that honors the structure of the original category and kind of projecting it into or interpreting it within the other category, um, embedding it within the other category variously. Um, and you recall that to, to honor that structure in the source category, if we have a functor from C to D, it needs to honor the, the, the uh, structure in C and mapping it to D. Uh, and it does that by honoring identities, morphisms, and honoring composition of morphisms, right? So identities have to map to identities, and we have to be able to either um, equivalently, uh, uh, take two end-to-end -end morphisms in the source category, compose them in the source category and map over, or it, it, it must be equivalent to mapping the first of those morphisms over, the second of those morphisms over, composing them in that other category, category D, the target category, and compose them there must give the same morphism. So either compose and source and then map must give the same result as mapping and then composing in the target category, right? Um, so those are our, our you know, two things which functors have to, have to ensure. And functors involve functions uh, over um, for mapping objects to objects and each Hom set uh, from A to B, the morphisms in that Hom set, the set of all morphisms from A to B, um, that set is mapped as a function mapping that set onto the set FA to FB, you know, the 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 image of, of A between the image of A and the image of B in the target category. Um, uh, there there has to be this. All these morphisms in the source category have to be mapped to some morphism uh, between the corresponding objects in the target category. Um, those could be collapsed down. So sometimes, you know, two objects may be collapsed to a single object um, in the target category. And sometimes uh, morphisms from uh, those objects that are collapsed get mapped into the identity morphism. Uh, but an identity in the source category is guaranteed to be put mapped to an identity in the target category. Um, now, 
The first topic, though, I want to talk about this notion of functors to and from shape categories. Um, and this notion is tied in with a very widespread notion called diagrams in, in category theory. Um, so I introduced early in this class this notion of sort of a functor when you first saw it, this notion of sort of using it for pattern finding. So um, if we have some index category I, probably should have put it in script uh, here, um, it has some pattern in it. It's by mapping it into a target category D that we uh, that we find instances of that pattern in D. Um, so you know, category one, the walking object, we kind of find objects in the in the other category. Walking pair, we find pairs in that other category. But it gets more interesting once we have added structure beyond the identities um, uh, that are present in one and two, these two categories, um, uh, where, where it's discrete categories, where they're disconnected uh, in two. Um, so arrows, uh, the so-called walking error or quintessential arrow, as Eugenia Chang terms it, and the isomorphism category um, have interesting uh, interesting mappings. And in, and other diagrams have, have interesting mappings. So uh, in category theory, we when we're mapping from a shape category, um, there's this key notion of it representing a diagram. Um, this finite ca category representing some shape, um, some piece of structure. And we consider another category called C, sorry, I called it D up here, but called C. And we imagine a functor from this shape category, this finite category into C. And we term that functor a diagram of shape I and C. Um, sort of a, it's a diagram um, inside of C. So maybe that diagram is a commuting square, for example. Or maybe that diagram uh, shows the sort of uh, cone structure that we have in a, in a product or a co-cone like we have in a, in a um, co-product. Uh, it can find these, these different types of structure within, within C. And uh, notions like limits are very much tied in with this notion of a diagram. You may recall that products are a limit and terminal objects are a limit, uh, and pullbacks are a limit. And it has to do with these different diagrams of various sorts. We saw that in a previous chapter um, uh, where you know, we're, we're mapping in uh, some structure into the target that looks differently for these different universal constructions. Um, and functors provide these strong tools for finding these patterns in a target category because they map these, these morphisms, right? And, and we, you remember we went through this early in the class, so I'm not gonna emphasize it that much, but remember the walking object category with its identity morphism. And we noted that there are functors mapping um, uh, it to various target objects here, right? It, this has to go to a particular target object, can't go simultaneously to A and B, but it could go to A or it could go to B or it could go to C, right? Um, and this identity morphism, what does it map to? If, 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 if A here maps over to B in magenta here, what does the identity morphism on A over here on the left have to be mapped to? Can anyone say? Uh, the identity. Mm-hmm. That's right. Now, do you remember this notion of the walking arrow category? What would this look like? Do you remember that? What what does a collection of functors um look like from it to another category? 
Well, let's let's think. Um, so we have to consider where A maps to, and we have to consider where B maps to. Um, and so could you give me one example of where A maps and B maps that would, um, where F maps to some particular morphism here? Yeah, say uh, A maps to A in the right and B maps to B in the right and F is either of those two morphisms. Uh, uh, good, yeah. So A maps to A here, B maps to B here, and F could be this one. And there's a, and that'll be one functor, right? And another functor would map, uh, the object's the same, but F will be mapped to this upper one. So those are two great examples of, of, of uh, functors from this. But can you give me another one that's um, uh, that's more uh, less uh, obvious perhaps or less uh, direct in its visual appearance? What could A and B be mapped to, for example, that would look rather different in, in terms of the result? So you're right that A and B can be mapped to different objects here. Um, could could A be mapped to A and B be mapped to C? Is that possible? If A could A be mapped to A and B to C, and why not? If not, I think you said no. Why not? That's correct. Why not? Um, because A needs to go to A, not. Uh the other way around okay so, so if a goes to a and b goes to c needs, what would what would be problem what would the problem sorry be? yeah a needs to go to b um but for the mapping it c goes to a not um a goes to c which is okay what's so so why is that a problem like what you're correct that it's not possible for a to go to a and b to go to c here and why not because what of f wrong? Yeah, because F it's pointing the wrong direction points in the wrong direction. Exactly. Could A go to C and B go to A? So could A go here and B go here? Is that OK? Yeah, because the arrow is the right direction. Arrow is the right direction. Yeah, good. OK, but visually, what, what other one could there be that would look very different in terms of the mapping? A and B can go to the same object. Could go to the same object. What would suppose A and B both went to uh, A? What is what does F have to map to? Identity. Identity, right? So does ID A, and so do ID B. By the way, both have to go. Yes. Okay. Suppose that A and B both map to B over here on the right. What is F? Do we still only have one choice for F? Or can we, do we have many? We have uh, many. It could be either the identity or one of those four arrows. That's right. That's right. One of the four arrows, right. Um, exactly. There's a thing called a constant functor, which maps these both to the same object and F. Uh, so a constant functor would also map F to the identity. And that is one choice. That's so kind of a canonical choice. But but it could also map these other ones in a functor because it's it's going from here um, in the definition from FA, which is both mapped to B and, 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 and this is B in the right diagram. And so you just have to go to a some morphism. So there'd be different functors from from that map the both to this one versus to you know both a and b to to b and f to this and a different functor would map both a and b on the left to uh to to b here but but this uh, morphism there etc. Um. Uh, yeah. So. Um, 
I think we've we've seen this, but when we map isomorphisms, this is an interesting sort of uh, uh, projection here. Um, so if we map the isomorphism on the left, um, if, uh, over to the right, what is it? What happens? Uh, what does it find if we map the isomorphism on the left to the right? What structure has to result on the right-hand side? Even if it's a trivial one, a, a really small one. It has to map to a... To an, to an isomorphism. Isomorphism, that's exactly right. Um, so if G here is F inverse, which is what we're positing for walking isomorphism, why does it have to be that it's that when we map it into this target category, we get an isomorphism. Can anyone quickly formulate an argument? If if over in the source category, F and G compose to be identity in, in either order, why does it have to be that they go on to a pair of arrows that compose to be an identity on the right? Because the functor has to honor composition. So if they compose to the identity on the left, they still have to compose on the right. Exactly. So remember, you have to, the idea of honoring composition means honoring identities. That's one thing. These identities have to go to identity. But it also means you inter, it has to be identical, interchangeable to either first compose them here, which would give identity if we composed. F and excuse me, F and then G, then we'd have identity on on this one, and map it over. Um, uh, has to be identical to mapping uh, over. You get FF some morphism over here, and then you map G over. You get another morphism, and then you compose them over there. You have to get that same morphism we got when we you know composed them here and mapped over. So the fact that it needs to give exactly the same result to compose on the left and then map, has to give exactly the same result as mapping over and then composing, means that an isomorphism here has to map to an isomorphism there. Okay, um, so you know we, we had that notion that we explored early on, but one thing I wanna emphasize is you can also talk about functors to a shape category, and, and here, we're talking about maps from a category into this. So what does the collection of functors look like here? Does anyone remember this way of thinking about it? What? How many functors do we have here? Or what, what do those functors look like to go to walking object? Remember functors has to map objects to objects. And morphisms from object A to object B to morphisms between the image of object A under the functor to the image of object B under the functor to, to, to between the, the maps of those two objects. So, so what do the functors look like that go to walking objects? What do they do? They collapse everything down onto the one object. It's like the, the terminal object and set the categories. Exactly. Okay. Um, how about for walking pair? What do these do here? Yeah, what are the choices here? This is an interesting one. Tell me something that wouldn't be okay here. What what would be a, a problem? Give me a a mapping of objects on the left to objects on the right that would pose a problem. What would be a bad mapping? Uh, 
uh, if you mapped uh, A to, on the left to A on the right and uh, B and C to B on the right, because uh, there will be no arrows. Yeah, so we not only have to map objects on the left to objects on the right, but we have to map arrows between any pair on the left to arrows between the corresponding pair on the right. You know, give an arrow between a pair on the left to an arrow, some arrow between the corresponding pair on the right. Mm. And sometimes you make collapse. Now, I think you said if you map A to A, B and C to B, that's a problem because there's some arrows like from C to A or from B to A, which have nowhere to go, right? Um so if A on the left goes to A here, B and C go to B here, what are we going to do with the red arrow? Well, this arrow has to go from the image of B, which is this good, to the image of A, which is this one. But there's no way to do it. There's no arrow to map onto. It's mapping on a non-empty set between the hum from, from B to A to an empty set, which is the, the home from FB to FA. So that would not be a legitimate mapping. We have nowhere for this red arrow to go and nowhere for this arrow to go. These arrows that kind of cross um, between the divide, much less in these blue ones too, right? The blue ones have nowhere to go. They have to go over somehow to B, but there's nowhere to take them there. So, based on that insight, the things you can't do, what could we do? What's one acceptable way to map these? Mapping everything, all the objects to one object and all the morphisms to the identity morphism. Good. Good. That's exactly right. All the objects to one of these, oops, and all the, um, all the morphisms between objects and, and within objects, the identity of one of these. Now, let me let me ask this though. Suppose there were something to, to, to put it out here. Um, maybe I'll draw a little. There, there we go. Um, imagine the the uh, I, I imagine that we have a um, um, we have some sort of nice uh, uh, identity on this one too. Let's suppose we'll call this uh, D. There we go. There's D. It's not that's not so nice, but okay. Um, that's that's D. Okay. Um, so suppose that's D. Um, do we have more choices now? So this has an identity. That I'm just not drawing. But does it have more choice in how it maps? Before, Larissa said quite rightly, everything has to be either mapped to, to one of these. So everything previously, before we put D in, had to either be mapped to A and all the morphisms mapped to the yeah, identity on A, or they could have all been mapped to B and all the morphisms mapped to, to B. Now we can have the big chunked one um yeah. map to a or b and d you can map to a or b regardless of what the other one maps to that's right that's right so it forces connected components components that are connected together to go to the same one right but one that's disconnected or it's in a different connected component can go to a different one each connected component can go to, can choose independently which one it goes to. Do you get that? Like if, if D were connected with another one, E, they'd have to go to the same one. But they could go to, to either of these, and, and these ones have to go to either of these, and there's no interference between the two. Do, do you get what I'm saying with that? Are people okay with that concept? 
Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Okay, how about functors from a category into the walking arrow? Remember this? Okay. Give me... So first of all, is there more choice here or less? I mean, do we have more flexibility here or more choices or, or fewer choices? We're not quite as constrained, right? Because we have this ability to divide things up, divvy them up into the different A and B here. Give me... Give me a division that's not okay. Give me one that's bad. Like an option that won't work as in bad? An option that won't work, yeah. Uh, a and B goes to, go to A, and then C go to B. It's not good. It's not good. And what's not good about it? Because we don't have any direction between C and B. Yeah, so there's no way. So if, if A and B go to A and C goes to B, somehow we have to handle this morphism, which on the left goes from C to B, right? Um, so we need some to map it onto some morphism from the image of C, which is B, to the image of A and B, which is A. And, we, and there's no morphism there. So we couldn't do that, right? Um, Okay, could you give me some that you can do? I what would the, be? Only, okay. the only uh -huh. one that works would be C maps to A on the right and A and B map to B on the right. So that will work. That will work. But is it the only one? I thought so before, but now I'm doubting myself. Remember, and, uh, and uh, all yeah. of them go go to one of uh, A or B. Perfectly fine. Yeah, there's nothing that says that a morphism here that a. So we have to map all these morphisms over to here, but just kind of like a little bit like with the notion of a function, right? Mapping sets. There's nothing that says something has to be mapped onto F. Now, when we start getting into things like full and faithful functors, which you know came up for this reading, uh, it's more subtle. But with a general functor, as as um, was mentioned, C map to A, um, um, A and B on the left could map to B, and, and it's fine. But we do actually have a possibility of A, B, and C all mapping onto A. Or for that matter, the mapping onto B, um, all the morphisms between a mapping onto identities here, and just nobody maps to F. That's fine. Remember that a that a target category can include lots of other bells and whistles and gadgets, lo or lots of other things over here in the category that are not mapped onto, that are not reached. It doesn't have to be surjective. Now again, we're once we get to full and faithful matters, then it's um, um, there's somatic criteria. But here, you know, there, there's no problem mapping these guys onto A. Um, just all of the morphisms map nine and A, A, and nothing maps onto the others. That's okay. Or they could all map to B, um, and all these could go there. But there are certain constraints that rule out some options of dividing these up, right? So here we have a almost a notion of flow of the diagram or something, right? Like C is upstream of these two. So it can go to A and A and B on the left can go to 
could go to B here, for example, it kind of it, it allows us to kind of characterize the the flow of the diagram um, in a certain direction. Okay. Um, I think well, in the interest of time, I think I'll I'll leave the um, the isomorphism one. Um, for you to think about. But in general, and I had made up this table earlier, but I, I wanted to share it. Um, you know, in terms of uh, this notion of if we have a shape I, say a walking object be mapped to a particular category, what what role does it play? What function does it serve? What what does that accomplish? Well, it picks out an object for mapping the walking object to a category. It's kind of like a map from the singleton object or singleton set to a set. It picks out each element of the set. Or walking pair, right? It picks out pairs of objects here. Um, walking arrow picks arrows from C. Walking isomorphism picks isomorphisms from C. Um, uh, a set with two objects where two arrows go in the same direction. Um, that's kind of interesting. Two objects, two arrows going in the same direction. Um, it's a model for graphs in the target category. It sort of um, has a picks out a graph structure in the target category. Um, like, like a graph schema type of thing. On the other hand, if you have uh, a category C and map into an object of shape I, um, uh, now, you know, that walking object basically forces all objects in C being mapped to, you know, a single object, right? Um, um, uh, excuse me, all objects, uh, yes, in C are mapped to a single object, all morphisms to ID morphisms. Walking pair, this kind of classifies, right? You can, um, classifies components, not, not at particular objects, but components. Any connected ones have to go to the same object. You remember um, remember this guy, right? They have to go to one or the other if they're connected. It's only a disconnected one that could go, you know, there you can, you can choose for each component. Walking arrow category, you kind of have a flow or it sorts sorts them. Um, any two objects that have a, a morphism uh, between them um, uh, must either be mapped uh, to, to A or mapped to B or X on the upstream and Y uh, on the downstream. But, um, but that's, you know, if, um, if there's no reverse one. If, if you had also not just a link from X to Y, um, but also one from Y to X, then they'd have to go to the same one because you're not going to be able to map them, you know, have, have the bi-directional connection. Right? Um, um, so here, it kind of like splits C into two areas where arrows go only one direction from one of those areas to the other. It's kind of like going sources and sinks. So this is kind of like a source. And this is kind of like sinks. Um, it has no link back to the sources. It's downstream. So it's kind of like, you know, upstream, downstream, right? Um, walking isomorphism separates objects into two sets, but there's no restriction as to what's in each set. Um, we could have, you know, these objects go, you know, some of them go here, some of them go here. Oops, sorry. Some of them go, uh, ah, sorry. Ah, okay. Some of these objects, some subset goes here, some object subset goes there. And um, if there's, morphisms in either direction, 
We can map them onto these ones. Um, and, and there's no, um, there's, there's no restrictions, um, as to what goes into which set. Remember, if we map an isomorphism on the left over, we have to have this functoriality property. We have to preserve composition, honor it, respect it. But if there's some isomorphism here on the left, um, that doesn't impose a requirement that the things on the left be isomorphic any more than you know mapping a morphism onto an identity on the right requires the morphism on the left to be an identity it doesn't and if we have two er two objects where two arrows go in the same direction between them it classifies all the objects into two groups um um uh, with restriction then, uh, on any two pairs of objects, such that there's two morphisms uh, uh, from um, you know from X to Y, so pair of objects X and Y where there are two math morphisms, they um, uh, either have to map to A or or to B or X to A and 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 X to uh, X to B. Um, uh, so uh right you can't uh here you can't have a morphism um uh, in the opposite direction uh, you can't have deal with a kind of reciprocal one on the the, the left hand uh, side here um by mapping it to something like that anyway so these are kind of interesting um interesting things accomplished by mapping. And this one on the left is all about sort of the role of diagrams and kind of functors as pattern finding, finding diagrams in a, in a category. And you may remember that when it came to things like um, uh, co-products and products, we were finding diagrams in categories as a dual. Um, and it 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 very much has to do with sort of these um these more these functors from some category into the target category that find instances of a certain pullback square or what have you a certain shape a pair of objects etc Okay, are we okay with this? Are people feeling okay with that? Yeah. Hard to, hard to see me. Maybe I should think of. Okay. Um, so that was a little bit of review at, at the one level, but uh, hopefully, you know, links it in uh, some good with, uh, so it's like campfire talking about a campfire or something. Um, okay. Um, so I'm going to stop there.